to point your attention to 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verse 8 is where we'll find our marker uh, for this second Sunday in December. Amen. 2018 is almost done, y'all. Yeah? Yeah. And somebody didn't even know if they were going to make it out of February. Yes, All right. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> First Kings chapter 17, verse 8. I'll pray while you continue to turn those pages. Don't be ashamed to go to the table of contents. Amen. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity, God, to stand before these, your people. We pray, Heavenly Father, that nothing come out of my mouth, Father God, that you didn't put in my heart. We pray, Father God, that you put in my mind, you put in my mouth, you put in my spirit to be an obedient servant, Father God, in this preaching hour. Heavenly Father, you know what you call. You know, the Father, who you call. You know the words you prescribe for today. Help us, Father God, to receive what you have to say in this season. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you found 1 Kings, 17th chapter and the 8th verse. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it for you from out of the New King James Version. And it is our custom that we stand as we read the Word of God. Amen. Uh, you ain't got to give me respect, but please respect the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Bible says as such. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat and then die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and for yourself. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up. Somebody missed a shout already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nor shall the jar of oil run out until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. I think I'm about to shout before I get down preaching. Because she heard what the Lord said through her men, and she and her household for many days, the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run out, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. For us to tag this sermon today, we want to use this. God has already provided all you need. Amen. Somebody in here tell your friend, God has already provided all you need. You may see it in the presence of our Lord. As we are in this season of recognizing that Jesus was born in this season. Do I have a witness today? But as we understand that in the season of God giving us the best gift that we have, we try our best to emulate Jesus Christ by giving unto our loved ones. Um, as some are inspired to write their list on who they want to bless and who they want to do great things for, unfortunately, by the time they get to the end of their list, their heart is sad because their heart is bigger than their resources. All right, all right, all right. And what happens in this season is people feel like they are not adequate enough is because they can show people the expression of their love through what they can give out of their pockets. So what happens in this season is people become more recluse. You'll notice who ain't coming to church as much as they used to come. But with this time of year, it's difficult to hear about people having family. People having loved ones and things you do when you find yourself on the outside looking in. Big mama then went home to be with the Lord. You ain't talking to your mama or your daddy. You feel alone and by yourself. But it's interesting. 
insisting that you can hear this word clearly that God has already provided all you need. You understand, our flesh will get us drunk on our wants. When you can't line up to somebody else in the parking lot because of they've been blessed, you feel like because they blessed, you don't have the best hand because your blessing ain't came yet. Right. Can I give you a principle before we get to this sermon? If somebody parked next to your normal spot in a new car, you go ahead and shout like it's your new car right. because they close to you. Yeah. Let somebody get a new car here just like I got a new car here. I'm glad that the Lord is blessing yeah. the family yeah. of God. Yeah. And if you can't be happy for your brothers and sisters in Christ, keep on driving that jalopy because ain't nothing coming your way if you can't celebrate your brother. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah. 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 I want us to understand that Elijah was in a position of being a prophet, a spokesman for God. Prior to this particular story, he told this region that it will not rain. Have you read this course in the Bible? That they were in the midst of a drought. When there's a drought and a famine, that means this, that uh, if you are a prophet, you can't fly into Detroit and give me something that God said and get back on the plane and fly back to where you came from. Let's get to what the word says. The word says the prophet gave what God said, but a real prophet got to live in what God said. Yes, all right, all right. If I came to give you a message from God, I got to receive the exact same message. So this is a man of God who is experiencing a drought, but still has the word of God in his mind. He just came off of being fed by the brook and he read the Bible, and the dirty raven was bringing him food every day until the brook dried up. Now, I'm faithful. I'm trying my best to do and say what God said, but all my resources has dried up, and I'm still coming to Bible study when I'm supposed to. I'm still bringing coffee when I'm supposed to. I'm still showing up, but my resources, God, my resources are drying up. Right. And he gave you a principle that, that, that God ain't just drying up your resources because you've been bad or you're getting a whooping. Sometimes God got to dry up your resources to send you in another direction. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. If you're still eating where you've been eating, but I'm tired of you living where you've been living, I gotta dry up what you like there. When I dry up what you got there, now you're more open to hear what the Lord says. The Bible says he heard from the word of the Lord. All right. Get on up from where you are right now, feeling sorry for yourself, and go to Zarephath. When you get to Zarephath, I've already prepared a widow to be a blessing to you. I'm, I'm not even going to read this. I'm feeling good. That, that, that I've already prepared somebody that you don't expect to be a blessing to you. Yeah. Understand that they didn't have government assistance in this particular time. That if you ain't have no husband, you was panhandling. Well... If you ain't have no children that are over adult age that could take care of you, you was in a bad situation. That's why the Bible says she was a widow to help us understand the plight of the situation. So you're telling me, God, you're sending me from a brook that dried up, and you're sending me to a woman that got dried up pockets. If I'm hearing from the word of the Lord, you go into 2018, people will teach you and say, if you are following God, you're supposed to be on full all the time. Yeah. If you're doing what the Lord says, you should always be blessed. I haven't found that version of the Bible just yet, but what I have found is the closer you get to God, the less friends you'll have. The more obedient you are to God, it seems like you got to stay on your face even more. Uh, the devil got your number on speed dial the more you spend time with God. But let me give you a newsflash. If the devil ain't on your road, y'all might be on the same team. He ain't got a reason to, to frustrate you. You're doing what he wanted to do right now. Uh, so the prophet had to go and, 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 and go where God told him to go. And I want somebody here to understand this, that it ain't up to you to go where you want to go. But if you're trying to follow God, you got to go where he says go. Uh-huh, I'm going to witness for a bit. I, I remember some people saying this in their spirits last year that, ooh, he's a good preacher, but that's fine. Well, oh. And in their spirit, watch this, in their spirit they says, but I'm willing to go where God called me to go. And they wouldn't dare trade in their church for nothing because I don't care how far I'm going. My spirit is fed. My marriage is better. I feel like I'm getting smart again. I'm dreaming about businesses again. My back don't hurt like it used to hurt. When you are where you're supposed to be, God's going to bless 
surpass everything in your life. That's for real. That's for real. Let's get to what God wants us to know today. He says that, that, that God is a, a provider. Do I have any witnesses in here that knows that? I ain't talking about what you heard somebody else say, but I'm talking to somebody that can praise God when you're standing in the wick line. You're yeah. going all the way there. You ain't mad because you got to stand in the wick line. You're praising God because you can stand in the wick line. It ain't the type of cheese that I prefer, but thank you for the cheese. Oh, we're going to help somebody this Christmas season that, that it ain't what I receive, I just received. When we get our minds off of what we want and somebody thought enough of us to give us a sweater, thank God that I was on somebody's mind. All right now. God gives us what we need. When Israel needed a leader, he raised up Moses. Is that right? When they needed water, he gave them water in the desert. He supplied that water from a rock, an unexpected place, an unexpected source. When, when they wanted something to eat, food fell from the sky. Y'all see the thing here? When you needed a savior, God gave your salvation inside of a baby. God will put your provisions in places you ain't even look. God will put your blessings in the mouth of the person that you ain't taking calls from. God will put a blessing in somebody that's staying on ever-loving nerves. But when you finally take that call and say, Sister, I've been trying to get a hold to you. I, I, I've been losing all this weight, and I got all these clothes in the closet that I, I thought I could bless you with. But, 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 but since you ain't taking my calls, I got to leave this message on your voicemail. Y'all better start calling folks back. Understand that, 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 that Elijah, we were deep in the valley of, of suffering. And sometimes when we're in the valley of suffering, we don't want nobody to see us suffering. Amen. When we're going through, we don't want nobody to see us going through because somebody told us we gotta always look our best. Right. Even when we got three dollars in our pockets, we gotta wear four hundred dollar outfit. Because right. people gotta see how good or strong we are. Right. But I wanna bless somebody today. You better take off that phony mess yeah. and start presenting yourself to the Lord that I'm having trouble, but I'm still yeah. trusting God through my trouble. Yeah. I but I got a pretty scarf to put on my head. I am not skipping nothing for God because I am deaf to death. Because I don't look good. Get over yourself and feed your soul. All right, yeah. 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 says that he shall provide all of our needs. Amen. According to riches and glory through Christ Jesus. That, that, that when you find yourself in want, God already knows what you want before you ask for it. Yeah. 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 Before you even put your petition in order, God says, I've already made provisions for you. I've already said this because I know that you've been faithful. I know that you're trying your best, but it seems like the more you try, the more you cry. It right. seems like the more you give, the more they take. It seems like the more you forgive, the more people try to don't say it. It seems like the people, when you decided to be a forgiving Christian, they will give you all the world to forgive for. Ain't that right, somebody? But don't stop being who God's created you to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this word. I want you to understand this first point. That God has to do this. He has to prepare the provision. All right. All right. God ain't going to just give you any old thing. He has to prepare the provision. In this particular text in verse 8, the Bible says that, And the word of the Lord came unto him, Elijah saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to, to sustain thee. Meaning that she has already, I put in her heart to take care of you before you get there. All right, all right. Somebody just missed that. You don't want to meet no new people. You don't want no new associations. You don't want to reach out to somebody the Lord put on your heart. Watch what you may, may be missing. God may have already put on that person's heart to tell you what you've been waiting to hear. But if we don't want to go outside of our friend circle, us four and no more, sometimes we're going to miss what God is trying to say. Mm, got real quiet in him. I only talk to women that's married. Uh -oh. well. <laughs> My friends can't be single. Where that's at in the Bible? 
If you secure in who you are, maybe God assigned somebody single so in your married miss you can show her how to get married one day. Alright, alright. Prince, bro, you prince in the game. Right. So your right. your circle is people that you only get along with. Alright. Let me help you. If you want to get smart, you better get around smart people. There you go. If you want somebody to get on your ever loving nerves about you not reading the Bible enough, hang around some people that love reading the Bible. All right. If you know your prayer life is raggedy, how come you won't be around some people who love to pray? Because we try to present an image that we always got it going on. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I want to be around people that know more than me so I can be challenged. So if I don't got it, I know one of my friends got it. All right, now. There we go. God has to prepare, prepare the provision. I, I, I love this part because when you see the word of the God, the Lord, the Bible says that, that I'm sending you to a widow woman right. who's going through a famine. Look how smart God is. You in the middle of a famine, Elijah, and you're feeling the effects of the famine, but you have one thing ahead of everybody else. You are the one who said it because I said say it. So you were prepared for the famine, but you still got to live through it. All right, all right. In order for you to be blessed, I've got to send you to somebody that's in need just like you. Oh, all right. In order for me to pull the best out of you, I've got to let you see the effects of what you're going through. Y'all ain't going to pray with me today. In order for our prayer life to be the way it's supposed to be, we need to touch and agree with somebody that cried not just like you. All right, all Go ahead and preach. You need to find somebody who's going through things in their marriage just like you. Because we can go to the Lord together and we can pray for both of our marriages so both of our marriages can be blessed. All right, man. <laughs> he says, I'm sending you to a place called Zarephath, and, and there's somebody I've already touched in her situation to be a blessing to you. Now, ain't that the hardest thing in the world? When God tells you to bless somebody, and you look at your resources, and you say, well, I, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But I'm going to encourage you today to be obedient to what God told you to do. You might not have nothing in the bank account, but God has invested a talent in you. You better put a barbecue chicken together and put a bowl on that thing and say, God, put you on my heart. And I bless you with the blessing that God put in me. All right, now. Amen. You ain't always got to buy something. All right. All right. Sometimes people appreciate the love you put in that thing. Some people know you might not come and put no money in the pastor's hand, but you show up and go to the gas station and get some lemons. All right, man. All right, man. Y'all ain't gonna me today. It's the intent of your heart, not how much you give. It's about why you gave. All right, man. All right. Did you do it because of love, or did you do it to show off? Oh, wow. I, I want you to go someplace to where when you see who I've called to bless you, your flesh ain't going to receive you. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I want you to get past how you feel, and I want you to be obedient to what I say. He says you are in lack because you don't know how to act. Some of us don't know how to ask. We know it is a true need, and we know we got people that love us, but we're afraid to show our hand. Well, you know, can you bless me, and I'll try my best to get it back to you, but many times we've had people in our past that, uh, how can I say this, uh, we trusted those people. Yeah. And those people manipulated our trust. Yeah. All right. But can I help you with that? What happens when you let the past mess with your future, you mess with your own blessings. Right. You do, yeah. you do. Right. The last time I put myself in this situation, people told all my business. Yeah. Can I help you with that? Even though people tell your business, did that blessing meet the need that you needed? Yeah. All right, man. Y'all gonna be quiet today? I don't care what you say. You, you, you gave me some money to feed my family that night. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because we think ourselves out of our own blessings. All right. 
Proverbs 3 and 5 says it this way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Elijah, I know you saw this widow and you heard what God said. And you said, God must be crazy. How am I going to get a blessing from somebody who ain't got nothing? When you told me you were preparing a woman to bless me, I thought you was going to send somebody who was left with an inheritance. I thought you was going to send me somebody that was going to be able to take care of me when I was obedient to your word. But here's where we mess up, newfound hope. Stop looking at the conduit that God has called you to. But when you focus on God being the provider, don't worry about who he told you to go to. God gives the increase. You just do what I told you to do and watch what I do in your life. Why, why? Let's get some scripture in here. Jeremiah 29 11 says it this way. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Who said it? Say of the Lord, thoughts of peace not of evil, to give you an expected end. So I'm not sending you to a resource and make myself look bad, because realize everything you do for God, his name is attached to that thing. Yeah. All right. And if God sent me to tell you what he has told me to say, I'm representing God, so I've got to be obedient and not change what he said, but say everything that God told me to say. I don't know how the outcome's going to be, but this is what God told me to say, and here am I for the results. If Elijah was looking for something to encourage him from his human standpoint of a widow, like a well-dressed woman, somebody who could bless him, he was sorely disappointed. Yeah. But what he did find is he found somebody who was busted and disgusted, right. Dickens Scott. Right. He found somebody picking up sticks, right. which was an obvious sign of poverty. She right. couldn't afford no fuel, Burbridge, mm -hmm. so she had to rub some sticks together just to light a fire. Right. See, some of y'all eyebrows went up. They said, you can do that? Some of us so blessed, we didn't even know whether we could even do that. All right, all right. <laughs> you can start a fire like that? Yeah. Right. Broke people figure a whole lot of stuff out. Yeah, yeah we do that. Yeah. Yeah. In the 80s, we didn't know what an antenna was. That's a hanger. What you mean the channel on the TV is broken? You got little kids. Pick them up there and get the pliers out and change the station. <laughs> Universal Remote didn't come out in 2012. Universal Remote came out in 1976. <laughs> y'all know y'all mama call you mama. Come here. What you want, mom? Turn off my light. <laughs> this woman was so poor, she had no fuel. She, she had to cook a meager meal, but, but, but she had to round up a couple of sticks. She had already decided that I'm going to take all I have, and I'm going to prepare for this to be my last supper. Since many of us have decided that this is going to be my last hurrah. If my credit jacked up, I'm just going to do all I can, because I don't see no hope. All Don't right, y'all get right. quiet on that. I got my credit messed up. Give me a new card. Everybody getting blessed for Christmas. You better hold your horses, baby. All right, all right. Listen to the word of the Lord. Go ahead and slow down on sliding that credit and get some confidence to say, baby, I don't got it this year, but I'll be by to see about you. I'll be at all your school plays this year. I'll do more than giving you something. I'll be there to talk to you. Lord Jesus, you said something. I might not be able to buy you something, but I sure enough listen to you. I talk to you when you ain't got nobody to talk to. I'll be there for you. See, this is where we messed up, church. We don't want to give people time. We want to give them stuff. All right, all right. When you give people stuff, that almost gives us a license to not invest. Right. Because if you stop by, you might hear something you don't want to hear. Well, well. Grandma, you know I got a boyfriend. Uh -oh. Lord Jesus. Here go an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grandma. I got a boyfriend. And that's your grandson. Got a quiet job there? Mm -hmm. Giving them something ain't gonna be a blessing in that area. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. People that consider killing themselves on a daily basis. The love and the affection of a family member, a grandma, a granddaddy, may change somebody's trajectory. Y'all ain't hearing me right now. That just because you feel good because you can give it, do the person you give it to feel as good as you. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Watch this. 
the provider will ask you to do things that don't make sense. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Verse 11 says this, and she was going to fetch it. What's the it? Elijah saw her and said, listen here, give me some water. I see how broke you are. All you got is some water, I know. Can you get me some water? She didn't respond. She said, well, I can do that. We're in the middle of a famine. If y'all still got your Bibles open, it is a famine and it's a drought. But this guy I just met, I know he's the man of God, but he's going to ask me for something I don't have. You're going to ask me for something that is special because I'm preparing my, my last meal, but you want a glass of water? That's cool. I'll go get that. We just have a couple of sips less with our last meal. But while she was gone, Sister Jones, watch this. He said, hey, excuse me, excuse me. While you're going to get that water, can you bring me back a cake? Well, well. That's almost like when the, 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 that mama, she, she, she got pneumonia. Amen? All the kids see. Well. Husband act like he can't help nothing. And she came up there coughing, don't feel good, check it on him. How you doing, baby, need something? Yeah, yeah, she had me close the door. Hey, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, no thing. Can you squeeze my orange juice? <laughs> she already understands she don't have enough to give even to herself. But now Elijah's asking for something that she can't even fathom. Why are you asking me for something that I can't provide? Why are you asking? I can't, I can't squeeze something from something I don't have. But look, look, he's, she said it this way. I, I'm gathering two sticks. Let me break it down for you. You can't see what's going on in my life, but let me, let me tell you. Sometimes you just got to stop people. Yes, when they sound unreasonable, sometimes you say, listen here, let me call you back. L listen here. My situation is bigger than your request. Yes, sir. What you're asking me for is unreasonable. Yeah. Let me tell you, you saw me gathering sticks, right? Uh -huh. I'm preparing the last meal for me and my son. Uh -huh. And here you are asking me to bake you a cake. All I got is a little bit of meal. Uh -huh. And my plans with this little bit of meal was to be a blessing to me and to my house. Uh -huh. And after that last meal, that last pound cake with some water to wash it down, me and him were just going to starve to death. Still in the text. But here's the response. That, that, that God will always ask you to do something that don't make sense. Yeah. Right when you are on the cuff of breaking past, being broke, God will ask you to do something with the crumbs you have to change the trajectory of your life. But many of us won't release the crumbs because we convinced that those crumbs are going to keep us. Let me help you. If all you got is $5 in your pocket and you don't want to give $5, that $5 is not going to change your life. If you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, then God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I feel the presence of the Lord moving in my spirit that this $5 ain't going to hold me down. I need to release this thing in my hand because I need more than what's in my pocket. I've been convinced that i got to hold on to the little bit of I have and then I'll be okay. Open it up, preacher. Many of us try to hold back our affections from the one that we promised to live with for the rest of our lives. You know, I don't trust people. I had a bad situation before. So you hold on to dear life, that little bit of affection, because you're afraid to be hurt again. Preach, Ray. You better let go of what you hold on to so you can experience everything that God has promised you in your new family. You know, I love him, but uh, when, if I let go all the way, uh, he might take advantage of me. Well, if you're afraid of somebody taking advantage of you, you booed up with the wrong person. Oh, 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 we're going to get married, but we're going to have separate accounts. Don't y'all throw nothing up here. <laughs> I love him. We're going to trade all types of things. We're going to go on vacation together. We're going to make plans together. We're going to raise children. Together, but I don't trust you with my money. Uh, uh, Sounds like you need to be single. Uh, I know I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me, but God is speaking to somebody's heart today. How can you give God all of you, but the person that God gave you to express your love to Him, you don't trust Him? Wow. I told you the provider will have you do some things that don't make sense. 
Because you are not submitting to that husband, you submitting to God. Because you're doing things the way God called you to do them. And if you honor the Lord through your husband, you might have a witness in here. Somebody better throw their hand up. You've been obedient when you didn't want to be obedient. And the Lord turned everything around in your life. Well, I testify for somebody. Somebody was obedient to a hard-headed husband. And they got healed from cancer. Somebody was obedient to a pig-headed husband and you went to college for free. Somebody was obedient to somebody who never said thank you and it seemed like your whole life changed. And God showed you favor. The Bible says a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains what? Favor. Right now. Right now. Y'all ain't gonna put it really good. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just stay mean then. Amen. So the Bible wants us to understand it this way, that the sources that God chooses often test our submission and faith. Wow. I love newfound hope because many people in here are submitting for the very first time they've been in church. Y'all ain't got to say amen, the Lord already revealed it to me. Many people are submitting to somebody that's the same age as their kids, with the same birthday, maybe a year older than their kids. But God says, you ain't submitting to that pastor, you're doing what God told you to do, and I'm opening the windows of heaven, and I'm pouring out a blessing for you, because you didn't pass yourself, but you're doing what thus saith the Lord. <laughs> that God says, I'll give you something when you get over yourself. You know, I got kids his age. I go along with stuff as long as I agree, but if I don't agree, what did I say in the scriptures? <laughs> Let's go ahead and finish this thing. The Lord is my Jehovah Jireh. Make it plain. Jehovah Jireh. Fancy term, he is my provider. That God gives me what I need. God will provide for me when I don't even know what to ask for. That God will give me somebody that call out my name in prayer and I don't even know what to pray for. Give me some, Jones. That God will give me a member body of church that will call my name out when they see me not doing what God called me to do. Sometimes you ain't got to address the problem. Sometimes you got to go to God on people's behalf. provider don't mean you gotta like everything God provides. Don't mean because God give it you gotta love it. Many of us realize that Buckley's taste terrible. But if you want to get rid of that mucus in your chest you better take you some Buckley's. God will as my provider. He will go with you. He'll sustain you. He'll strengthen you. He is my beloved. He, he believes in me. Do I have a witness in here? Whatever I tell God, I lead me, guide me. God always got something to say. He said, I believe in your dreams. Why? Because I gave them to you. They might not be in the timing that you want to do them in, but I'm still going to see you through it. Oh, my God. But God says, I'm going to bless you when you go. I'm going to bless you when you come. Because you're trying your best to do what I've called you to do. But I want you to give me the glory when you have chance to. How do I give God the glory? I don't want to raise my hand. I don't want to shout. You want to know how you give God glory? Try being obedient. Yes. If you want to give God the highest praise, do what he told you to do. Yes. Deny your flesh daily. Crucify that flesh and do what God told you to do. And everything in your mind, in your spirit will start changing. Your situation might not change, but the way you see your situation will change. All right, now. Watch this. 14 says, For thus the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal that shall not waste, neither shall cruise oil fail, but the day of the Lord sendeth rain on the earth. What he wanted her to understand is, I want y'all to hear this if you're writing down these points. Pay attention to the promise. Yes. Yes. 
Make sure you pay attention to the promise that God gave you. What did Elijah tell this woman? He says, if you go and do what I say do, God sent me this far, not because I'm thirsty. God has my back. God didn't send me this far because I'm hungry. God sent me this far to bring you a word from the Lord. And it might be for somebody in here that you need to be less selfish. Pay attention to what the promise says that if you take what you had already planned to do with, Lord, have mercy. Some of us have already moved some funds aside and says this is for my retirement. This is what I'm going to do when I'm 85. Got one question for you. Who told you you was going to be 85? Not one. But when God is telling you to do something with your plans, but you're like, no, because I'm going to do something with this when I get 85. You're talking to the one who will give you the ability to get 85, and you're telling him no when he's trying to tell you, I've already looked past 85. And you might have a bank account full of money, and you might not be able to get out the bed. Well, uh -oh. All right, all right. Oh, wow. Pay attention to the promise. If you are willing to, to not focus on just you and your son. You know, you're getting in trouble, preachers and deacons, when you start asking a mama to take some food out of her baby's mouth. Y'all yes, uh, better talk back to me if you can. That's how God knows how to pull the juggler of faith. He start messing with your kids. All right, all right. Yeah. All the mamas cried a little bit just on that point. As soon as it seems like you got to make a choice between taking your babies to do what they're supposed to do on Sundays, but you got to bring them to church on Sunday, now you're in this tug of war. Do I give my babies what I think they should have, or should I do what God told me to do according to the scriptures? Train them up in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. Ooh, y'all got quiet. Have y'all ever wonder why every sporting event and practice is on Sunday? Amen. Oh, y'all yeah. down with me, huh? Uh -oh. You ain't realize that that's a test. What's more important to you? Are your children going to go to the NFL, NBA, soccer championship of the world? Or are they going to be guaranteed to stand before Jesus one day? All right. Which one is more probable? Mm. But we selfish if we invest in our children and take them everywhere. When they make it, come on, boys. When they make it, it's actually going to give honor to my mama, the real MVP. Well, all right. Well, you made it to the pro, but you're still going to hell. Who accountable for that? Well, mm. well. He says this, I want you to go and, 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 and do what you said, but while you're going, I need you to take what's in your hand and I need you to make a cake. And when you make that cake, I want you to change your plans. Somebody tap their neighbor and say, change your plans. Change your plans. I want you to change your plans. Now, this is not your last meal. Uh -huh. God just said something in here. Yeah. This is not what you planned it to be. This is not unto death. This is not your last treatment. This is not your last opportunity. This is not your last business. I birthed you to be an entrepreneur. If this business don't work, I've got business upon business in your spirit. I've already given you the victory. Mm. Come on now. But we negate the victory because we got our hands on God's stuff and we're trying to plan it out the way we want it. All right. mm. He said this, make me a cake. What's that word? First. Wow. Wow. Give it to me first. Amen. But I'm going to try your faith. You're going to give it to me trusting that God is going to give it back to you and your son is going to die. Mm -hmm. When God tells you that you're down to your last dime, but that preacher keeps talking about bless the Lord with all you have, you get a little attitude in your spirit. Right. He don't understand my finances. He don't understand what's going on. He don't understand what's going on in my life. But he always talking about give. Let me help you with that thought process. When God knows his people are in a famine, he'll tell you to do something that don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll tell you to do something right. I want you to give a special offer in the last Sunday of the year. Yeah. Soon as the Lord said that, somebody says, but I'm still going to be recovering from Christmas. Wow. <laughs> somebody can say amen and fake it or something. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention to the promise. 
that I want you to do something that's going to bless the man of God. Not just because I've been good to you. Not because I'm faithful. Watch this, y'all. You just met me. You just met me, and I want to introduce you to my God. If you stay in the text, if your Bible's open, she responded to him, and she says, well, I know that what you said, but your God, not my God yet, but your God has put us in this condition. This is my condition. I don't have any more to give. But Elijah says, but if you give, if you give, those things that you have will never run out. The meal and the barrel will not waste. Meaning that the things that you have, you'll always be able to keep them. Make them plain, somebody. That you'll be able to wear clothes from 1971 if you want to. Well, All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? You can gain weight, you can lose weight. But it seems like every time you go to put that jacket off, you can still put it on. Moths will come and they'll eat them up. But Johnny, ain't it weird that when God touched your life and you want to make yourself better, yeah. God will make your stuff last. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, now one more group of people. Somebody know you've been broke for a long time, but it seems like you said, well, I might not be able to hang with that church. That's a far church. I'm barely making it to where I gotta go now to eat. It seems like my gas don't go past E. But the Lord says, if you make this provision for me, I never let the gas tank run out. Ain't nobody gonna play with me. I never let the gas tank come out. I never let your refrigerator be empty. I have you in the house talking about Fool you are. If you look at your bills based on your money, it don't make no kind of sense. How am I still eating? The Lord. The Lord has made my impossible possible. Because I trusted him with my last. I could have kept everything that I gave God. I could have got a brand new car, but I wouldn't have had no joy. I wouldn't have had no peace because I would have known I was disobedient. Somebody that's been disobedient, give me an elbow offering. When you're outside of the will of God, your spirit wrestles all day long. Who want to live like that? I want to be where God wants me to be. I want to be in the position of being in his will. Because you know when you're in your daddy's will that they'll leave you stuff. All right. All right. Yes, the kids that's disobedient to their father don't get nothing in the will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God is helping us understand today that while you're going through situations, what he's doing is he's developing your encouragement. Yeah. 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 You can't encourage nobody unless you need to be encouraged one day. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be empathetic with people when you ain't ever gone through nothing. So somebody say something to me. Anybody ever went to the grocery store with a grocery list, but when you got to the register, you had to put some stuff back. You gotta testify to hold these tears back. When you go there with all types of plans, but you says, I wanna buy this and I wanna buy that. But when you got to the register, the stuff that was on your heart, you had to put back. But then you came home, and when you got in the car, you got to pray and say, Lord, I wanted to surprise my baby and do something special that he will appreciate and remember. But when you got home and your husband had the same thing on his mind, he went to the grocery store on his way home too. 